what you got here? Uh, listen, ice fishing is best when you got real furs on because it may, it connects you to the land. Arctic fox, very ice fishing. Try that. Really? It's a crazy hat because it doesn't keep your ears doesn't do anything to keep your ears warm. I'm not so sure about this, Steve. Or a red fox scarf. Oh yeah, that's that's the money one. Yep. You're wearing a region appropriate fur. I love this. This doesn't fit me. <laughs> See, <laughs> for most folks, early January in Montana means ski season. But Stephen Ranella isn't most folks. He doesn't believe in skiing. He believes in ice fishing. I'm Tracy Crane, and this winter, I've agreed to join Steve and see what all the fuss is about with hard water angling, a sport he believes is made all the better by the addition of furry headgear. Put it mildly, I'm skeptical. Skeptical not only of the headgear, but the whole concept of ice fishing. I'm willing though to maintain optimism for the day. Have you uh, looked out upon ice fishermen and thought, I wish I was out there? No. What do you that, think when you see them? Wow, I feel like that looks really cold. You sit there and you don't do anything for what seems like a long time. Is it really worth it? <laughs> That's the unsolved mystery of ice fishing. <laughs> Accessibility is one of the most attractive elements to this pursuit. And if you live somewhere cold, chances are good you can go ice fishing without driving more than half an hour. A lot of ice fishing is very local. Uh -huh. The vast majority of ice fishing I did as a kid was in the lake that our house was on. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Ice fishing was just, I don't want to say opportunistic, but tends to be casual. Help me get over this uh, burn, will you? There we go. People are very eye-rolly about ice fishing. It's like boring and boring. But I was thinking about it the other day, it's, it's like having a giant boat. It's like your <laughs> boat is as big as the lake. Hold that. This is very different than any kind of fishing. For starters, I learned the basics. Targeting small panfish with something called a spring bobber. It's the same setup he uses with his kids, and I do my best not to be offended by this. We're gonna put a little larva on there, okay? Yep. Then you lower that sucker, freeze your hands, and then you watch that spring bobber. This. Yeah. However, while he makes it look easy, admittedly, I don't. There, walk back. That's how, that's like the old way we used to fish through the ice. <laughs> See, there's a perch. Then you lower it back down. He's actually on there. I think he might be overestimating how easy this is for someone like myself with no real hard water experience. Get set up now, because you're probably going to get a hit. I got a feeling. Jig it? Tickle it. Tickle it? Is it tickling it like this? No, it's just a light jig. Now, I like light Steve, jig. and he might be a well-seasoned like ice fisherman, but his Nothing teaching is. and patience leave a lot to be desired. Is he there? No. Oh, what anything. do you mean? Oh, you missed him. Wait. Remember the conversation where he said I've never done this before? Yeah, get ready. Jig it. Jig, 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 stop. Oh. Oh, is he there? I felt something. No, 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 don't do that. Never like whip it like that. This whole ice fishing thing is turning out to be way trickier than I anticipated. Okay, hold, 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 hold. Set the hook. Set the, no, set the hook like this. Crank him up. Crank him. Crank, 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 crank. Oh. There he is. Get ready. Now, see, we're going to do this so you get the hang of it. Get, get your hand on the rod. Between the tough love teaching style and my struggle to properly set the hook, today is not turning into the leisurely day I was expecting. In fact, I'm a little frustrated. I don't understand what happened. I can't go through this again with you. Jig, jig, jig. Despite my apparent lack of okay. aptitude. I feel something. Well, I'm not holding the rod, so I don't know. Is he there? And the. Walk back. Shall we say gruff instruction? See, we're going to do this so you get the hang of it. I start catching fish. Little dinky perch. A dinker! <laughs> we'll clean them. Those are way too small. Those are way too small, but we're out here for meat. They might not be big fish, but hey, it's my first day. Perch. 
We're gonna leave here in a minute. Just got started. And of course, just when I start having fun, we move to a new location. I'm still not confident in my ability to detect strikes and set the hook. But you, you got it. But like all things, there eventually comes a time where you need to lose the training wheels. This, I guess. We need to find bigger fish than that. We relocate to a slightly larger town pond, one where I've actually gone swimming in the summer, which feels somehow, I don't know, weird. I know there's a lake full of icy water out there and the potential danger dawns on me. What if I fall through? What if I get trapped under the ice? How can anyone think the risk of all of this is worth the reward? Like you hear stories of people who've walked out onto ice where it's not thick enough, not safe people enough. People fall through all the time. Like what I'll do is if I'm on sketchy ice, I'll wear these around my neck. I just keep them in my pocket. What, are, what is that? So it's picks. Let's say you punch through. These, see, these allow you to go Cool. See? Oh, that is awesome. So when it's bad, I'll wear, yeah. if, if I'm worried, I put them right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like, okay, so like, if you're worried, what is it that you're seeing that makes you slightly apathetic? In, in the simplest way, it's like, how thick is the ice, you know? Right. I mean, there are qualities of ice, of like rotten ice, black ice, whatever, but just in, in general terms, people will say that four inches of ice is like safe to walk on. Okay. We'll, we'll grab the auger and we'll punch a hole and- And then you can see the-, the Just see how much it. is there. You can tell that it's good ice. Cause it's, that took Just a while, crystal, right? well, I mean, just good quality ice. Oh, I see. It's not just slush where you just push it yep. through. Yep. So here, seven inches of ice. It doesn't yeah. look white all the way through. Yep. We just call it black ice. It's just very good black ice. You wouldn't drive a car on it. Yep. You want it to be a little bit. You get a couple feet of ice, you drive a car on it, yep. 18 inches. Yep. As we survey the lake, we notice three large open holes rimmed with aquatic weeds. This hat I got on is beaver, but I've had yeah. a muskrat hats in the past, which are great hats. So this, this is where he lives. This this is called a push-up. This is just him harvesting aquatic vegetation. And then they come here to eat. Yeah, piling it up. And then they'll access it from under the ice. See how it's laying on the ice? Yeah. Eventually it'll get so frigid that this freezes and then he's just gonna live down. But he's probably got, they probably got bank dens. So they do these like eating areas close to where their dens are. Yeah, and, and you see like they're in here so much that they keep it open, but picture, you got one hand ice you can stand on, and then 12 inches away. Literally, that's yeah. froze. I mean, that's like very 12 like inches away. You got a place area. where you can fall through. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's deep, actually. <laughs> Watching the muskrats and learning how they survive winter while living in nearly frozen water is honestly more interesting to me than trying to catch panfish on miniature fishing tackle. But we're here for a reason, and I'm not giving up yet. I don't know if we're gonna stay here long, but it would be real bad to leave without a fish. Definitely don't like leaving without a fish. Unfortunately, our move to this bigger pond doesn't pan out. Got one. We manage a few small perch, but the action is a long way from hot. So we pack up and head to yet another urban impoundment. I want to have a conversation on that whole topic of fish feelings. Like when we just caught those fish, they were kind of still alive. Yeah. And then they just die. Yeah. People do things to fish they would never do to animals. Right. You'd never like have a wounded right. rabbit hopping around right. the back of a truck. Right. But do you think it has anything to do with the fact that they're small? And no. the size makes us no. feel less? No, because you'll throw a big fish in the bottom of the boat. No, right. we don't relate to them. Right, right. They don't have eyelashes. Anything with an eyelash, we treat well. If it doesn't have an eyelash, we're in, like indifferent to it. Right. Okay, tough fishing spot. You're making me nervous by saying that because it's not exactly like I mastered that last spot. No, but we're gonna Clearly. we're gonna we're gonna do some next level stuff and put sink a camera down there and just check it out. Yeah, that's cool. I'm excited about that. We'll fish it for a while. 
Let's, see, let's take a couple ganders in here. I'm no expert, but it's clear we're still a long way from a perch fry. And with that, we take a new approach. I'm going to drill another hole. Cutting as many holes as humanly possible. We're not getting a lot of visitors here. We're going to explore around just for the hell of it. I'm going to do this one more time and go up and see what happens with the water depth. We're prospecting. Since ice fishermen can't cast their lines all over the lake, like open water anglers, they have to prospect, looking for optimal depth and structure to find actively feeding fish. See any fish swimming around? You're just kind of like finding different situations, you know? Like they might be hitting somewhere and not hitting somewhere else. You might find a pocket of bluegills that are feeding. Sometimes small lakes, by the time we're done, it looks like Swiss cheese. I mean, we'll drill holes everywhere. While Steve works on undermining the structural integrity of the ice, I follow behind with a tool that's relatively new to ice fishing, a digital flasher and depth finder. This technology allows anglers to quickly and efficiently figure out water depth, identify subsurface structure, and even locate suspended fish. There's a bunch of fish down there. You see your jig? Your jig's at 12, 14, now it's where the fish are. Jig, stop. It's where the fish are. This technology helps us find fish, but that doesn't mean we can actually catch them. All this prospecting hasn't yielded us a single fish. I'm just starting to get the feeling at some point we're just gonna have to kind of make our, make a stand. And just commit to it? Maybe. And you know what? I'm cold. We've been standing around all day on frozen water, dragging around a sled with an unused insulated tent in it. Finally, I get Steve to set this thing up. Once we're inside, we try out another gadget, an underwater camera. Some people think cameras are ruining ice fishing. Fish. That's a little large. Others think they're saving a dying culture. Feeling a bit warmer and sheltered from the wind, I learn the nuances of a perch rig while we wait out these lethargic fish. When perch are really hitting, this is a pretty standard perch rig, which is just two, flies and a weight on the bottom. And what is the weight function? Because it ba you bang it on the bottom and, they, oh, and, it, and they, they're attracted to it, man. Oh, but it gets you down fast. Like this is like more for deep, fish in deep water. Oh, there it is. Wow, that's cool. And you can bang it, raise some silt, make some noise. Oh, two of them. Isn't it amazing how many you can call in? Oh, oh, see, he's spooked. He's back, he's coming back. Come on, buddy. But the real mystery right now is why in the world... Are we not seeing any perch? Are, here's a perch. See how his dorsal fin comes up? Oh, Spook. scared the shit out of me. I'm nervous I'm gonna miss it. Well, we solved our perch dilemma in terms of finding out where they're at. There are so many things that have happened ice fishing that if I only would have been able to see what was going on down there, I'd be like a much more educated angler. If I can see you, you can become like very reliant on it. I don't become, yeah, maybe you become reliant on it. Even though we know for a fact that fish are there and we can observe their behavior, we still haven't gotten a hit. Here's another, come on buddy. You're gonna be it. You wanna think they're individuals with their own tastes and personalities, but they're not. They just all respond to the stimuli the same way. But some <laughs> have gotten much closer than others. Yeah. Oh, they're all coming in. Yeah, it's like a school of bluegills. Just what's supposed to happen. But when Come a on. school of bluegills comes in, they're supposed to turn on. Bubba, let's go. They definitely don't like something. No, it's like, I think it's... It's like they come up to it and then they start to back away from it. They're like not hungrily feeding and they're just skittish. They're suspicious of something. Boss. Seeing the fish come in to investigate our bait, but then dart away is aggravating. Oh my God. And a true test of my patience. Here, he's back. He's got his fin raised. Get it, get it. God damn it. It doesn't you. make any sense. What is your deal, man? At least give me a chance to mess up and miss it and get yelled at. If I had like a dial that would move time, I would just crank that dial forward an hour, fish for 15 minutes. <laughs> Then everybody would be a dice fishing. Yeah. It'd almost be better, man, to not know. Here comes some tomato. Oh, it's irritating, man. I can't handle how irritating it is. 
It adds a level of suspense that's almost unhealthy. I feel anytime I'm out in the natural world with you, I, my anxiety is like on level 10. <laughs> oh, it's supposed to be relaxing. <laughs> it's the opposite. Are you ready to set the hook if he changes his mind? I'm going to try. Ooh, here comes another one dropping down. Come on. Guys, can't he you doesn't just, have that. He doesn't have that aggro look. Can't you, want you just to have. like throw me a bone here, guys? As a first-time hardwater angler. Oh. oh. He tickled my eye, but didn't touch it. Come on, buddy. Just down a little lower. Hold still. Hold still. There you go. Put it over the hole so you don't scrape them off. There. Yay! Finally. Nice big <laughs> bluegill, man. Look at that. Now I can end the day without feeling like a total zero. Nice big nice. bluegill. Cool. Not a beautiful fish? Yeah. Solid keeper bluegill. All the hours of waiting feel insignificant after catching this yeah. fish, but something tells me it isn't going to be our last. Right on. Okay, Jake, lift up, lift up, lift up. Hold it right there. Because he's. Yeah! See. The way that fish just came in and ate. Now it's a good sign. I, I take everything as a good sign. Or a bad sign. Pink on the moon, man. As the afternoon unfolds and the bite turns on, we're reminded <laughs> that catching fish is all about timing. And she got another one. Yeah, we're, on, we're on each other, but we're... Ice fishing hey. close to home isn't going to fill your social feed with jaw-dropping monsters. Well, you got one. But that's clearly not Excellent. the point. If anything, I've started to realize that so, these little yeah. local ponds are a great That's resource a to get outside, laugh with your buddies during a time of year when it's all too easy to stay in and binge you watch TV. It. Oh, man. I'm getting hungry, and with enough fish to finally make it worth it, we decide to pack up and head back to the Ranella house for my very first Friday night fish fry. A bluegill scale is easy. Okay. When you scale them, a good place to grip a fish is over the gill cover. Okay. To start, I learn how to scale both bluegills and perch. See, they scale beautifully. Yeah. And then the belly is a spot for this right there, right above the vent. Right here? Yeah. And then just, just for demonstration purposes, do a do a perch. So am I getting anything? Yeah, you're, yeah, you know you're getting it. It's just they're just not as easy to scale. And then how to right head now. and gut the fish. Gripping his gill cover. Take your knife in. I do a look, little move like that. Come down, and then you get, and you want to pick up his shoulders forward. Eviscerate him. And there. Like this? Okay, so I don't mind this part, but I'm certainly not as fast as Steve. By the time I head and gut one bluegill, he's done four. Is that okay? Yep, you got it. He's getting ready for the spring spawn. See that? Yeah. That's milt and that's row. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. We'll add that to the fry pile. I'm just getting this down now. Look at this. Clean cut. I learned that it's not uncommon to soak the fish in a tub of water overnight to let them firm up. This makes filleting easier and quicker. But since we're frying these guys up tonight, we use an ice bath instead. A lot of people fillet the ribs off and then de-rib then de them later. But I just fillet around the rib. Yep. I'm gonna try to knock one out. Okay. It's tough. Expert. Steve then shares his fish frying secret with me. I like fine cornmeal for making fried fish. I'll put paprika in the cornmeal for color. Then for the fish, rather than seasoning the cornmeal yeah. and trusting that the right amount of everything's getting on there, imagine that you just season the fish in a way where it looks like it would taste really good and let the cornmeal just be the cornmeal, right? Totally. But when you're doing hundreds of these things at a big party, it's hard to do them like this. Then you just then you just make a big batch right. of seasoned cornmeal because right. then right. it's just time consuming. But do that. So there, they look like they taste good. Okay. So take these, lay them in there, give them a good toss, so they all get evenly coated. Then you don't want to dilly dally too long, especially with the salt on the fish. Uh -huh. They'll start releasing moisture. And then into the fryer they go. I oh, mean, there's nothing better than that. No, dude, it's the best in the world. As the bubbles begin to die down, we know they're getting close. That's a bluegill. Those are good. But that's good. Oh, yeah. This is delicious. Yeah, Did you double dip? No. <laughs> I 
that's perch. Perch and bluegills are so similar that there's definitely, there's definitely a difference, but they're just very, very similar. You use them like interchangeably. Mm, there's a little bit of a difference. Cocktail sauce is good. I almost prefer the perch. Just, I mean, I like the bluegill a lot. I almost just prefer mm. this slightly. I love perch. It's my favorite fish. My, really? favorite, my favorite ice fishing fish, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. That's, that's mighty good. Mm -hmm. I did double dip. I know. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> no, imagine you don't catch a hundred of them. Makes those hours a lot more worth your while. Mm -hmm. I think no. I had a hard time um, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of why people are so obsessed with ice fishing. Now I can kind of understand. Nice work, Steve. What do you think? I love it. I was skeptical, and now I'm not skeptical. I always ask, do you think you'll ice fish again? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, really? I, maybe. I don't know. I don't love it as much as some of the other stuff that you've introduced me to. Okay. More for me. <laughs> I don't give a shit. But I'll come over when you do fish mm -hmm. fry. <laughs> I think Steve might have been a little disappointed that I didn't fall in love with ice fishing, but I can't say that I'll never go again. Maybe with some warmer socks, a flask, and some friends who keep me laughing, I'll give this another shot someday. The fish were delicious, and you know what? It was better than sitting around on my couch. I am, however, curious to see how the rest of this fur hat ice tour turns out. On the next episode, Cal and Miles take ice fishing far from accessible urban ponds and deep into the backcountry.